Okay, we're on page 119. Page 119, question 6. And I'm going to deal with journalising the, the corrections first. I'm going to do that as one a particular video, and then I'll show a second one where we do the suspense, and a third one where we'll do the correcting net profit and the balance sheet. So we start off with a blank document, the general journal I'm going to fill in now, and we'll do rough work as we need it. So starting off, <coughs> top of the question it says, we are blogs limited, okay? So, uh, no, number one, credit note received from Canty was credit sales returns and debit to P Canty. So that's the wrong Canty, not J Canty, P Canty. So, probably what I'll do is I'm going to cancel the things that the guy did wrong and then do what he should have done. So, I received a credit note from J Canty. So, J Canty was somebody that I must have sold stuff to. So, I'm going to have a J Canty account. Uh, C N T Y. So Jay Canty, I received a credit note from, so sorry, I bought something from because he sent me a credit note. So that means it's purchases returns. That's what I should have done, okay? Uh, I should have had a purchase returns account. Purchase we know is an expense, so purchase returns is going to be the opposite. And I received credit note 1980. And the Jay Canty, he's a creditor, somebody I owe money to. So I should normally have had a credit entry when I owe more money. So I have a debit entry because uh, I sent stuff back to him and I owe him less money. Um, what I did instead was I put it into P Canty and a sales return. So I'm just going to cancel that. So I'll go sales, returns, and uh, P Canty. So I'm going to cancel that and it says I was credited sales returns so I'm going to debit sales returns and the amount of money is 1890 so they put that in as the wrong one <coughs> so that's a debit and it was debited to Pcanty a debtor so I'm going to credit Pcanty to cancel it and we put it as 1890 in the Pcanty account as well. Now we'll do what we should have done in the first place so we'll go to the J Canty account uh, which is the one that we see over on the right hand side of the screen and that's a DR, this is the account I should have had and we have a CR in purchase returns. <coughs> so we have 1980 there and we have 1980 there, okay? And <coughs> so this is a purchases returns entered sales returns or I could have said there something like <coughs> um, purchase returns entered in the wrong account something like that so that's the first one the second one a debtor who owed blogs so remember I am blogs he owed us money 3865 so the check for 3465 and cash of 300 um, this is entered correctly in the books uh, no entry made of the dishonoring of the check or the writing off the remainder in the debt uh, because of bankruptcy so that means I would have cancelled the fact that uh, I was owed money. So my debtor, he was cancelled completely. So <coughs> what I should have done, when the thing is, um, when the check bounces, it's the opposite of receiving a check. So the accounts involved are a bank. So I, if I receive check, it's going to be on the debit side. When I find out later that the check bounces, It'll be a credit entry, so the bank is just going to say, you now have less money. So that'll be a credit entry, meaning I have less money. Uh, why do I have less money? I have less money because uh, a guy's gone bust, so I have a bad debt. So a bad debt is an expense, so that should be in the debit, okay? So it's three, four, six, five. If I found out that the guy, we phoned him and he said, I will pay you the money that I owe, well then, we wouldn't have a bad debt, we'd be putting it back into the debtor's account saying the debtors owe more money. <coughs> so, that was the only entry that was made, so I'll go and do that straight in here, so we'll have a bank, uh, 3465, and that's going to be on the credit side, and then we have a debit of bad debts, and that's going to be uh, 3465. And uh, I'm just going to write dishonouring. So dishonouring check and uh, bad debt not recorded. Okay, 
Number three, we issued the remaining shares at a premium of 25 cents a share. The shares were sold for 125. No entry made in the books regarding the sale of these shares. So that means <coughs> when I sell shares, I get more money from a bank. So the, the extra money will go in here, it'll be on the debit side. Then I'll have a capital account. So capital is when we receive uh, more money invested in the business, so that's going to be a liability, as in we owe more money back. And we have a thing here called share premium. Share premium is when people are willing to pay more than the face value. All these shares in capital are all at one euro each. Share premium is the extra 25 cents that people are willing to pay because they really want our shares so badly. So now we need to go and look at the question and see how many shares are um, involved. It says at the top of the question, at the top of that page, page 120, share capital is authorised as 900, and so far 846 have been issued. That means there's 54,000 shares left that can be issued, so we'll have 54,000 in here. And the share premium, so those shares were sold at 54,000 shares, and they were sold at 25 cents premium, so 25 percent extra was given so we received an extra 13,500 so the money that came into the bank was those two figures added together which is 67,500 and I can put that straight over here so we have debit uh, bank uh, 67,500 and then we have credit share premium uh, and that's the 25% which is 13 500 and then we're going to have 54,000 in uh, the capital account and that's going to be credit uh, so no recording of issuing shares at premium just so we understand, normally shares are sold at their face value, which is one euro. So that means if you put in 54,000, you get you uh, get 54,000 shares. This company, the shares are more valuable. Uh, so when we issue the shares, we're going to have to. People are willing to pay more money, so we charge them extra, which is called premium. So <coughs> we received a bank statement showing credit transfer receipt for rent. And it's for uh, rent for next year. So there's going to be a rent prepaid, but for uh, the sake of this, I'm going to ignore the rent prepaid for now. So we're just going to say, we received a bank statement saying that uh, we received rent, okay, and that was left out of the books. So I can do, I don't need to do the rough work for this, so I know that my bank has more money, so I go D or bank, and the amount is 5950, and then I'll C or uh, the rent received, because that's what I received money for. Uh, 5950. So, no recording or record of uh, rent um, received. Okay, now there's no suspense mentioned here because it's the, the credit transfer was omitted from the books. So that means that we would never put it into our bank because we weren't aware of it until we got the bank statement and obviously it was never put into the rent receive account. So there was no record and therefore no suspense. Moving on to the next one. He returned goods, bought a credit for 14.6 from the supplier. Transactions entered into the wrong amount and then a credit note arrived and there was a problem with that. So I'm going to treat this as two separate things. And um, so the first thing is that we, if I record note number one, so this is going to be the first. Um, we return goods, so that means it's going to be purchase returns. And the people that we return goods to are creditors. Uh, I don't see a name for the creditor here, so I'm just going to call it creditors. So purchase returns is normally, purchases is an expense, so therefore it's a debit entry. Purchase returns is the opposite of that, so it's a credit entry. And I bought them for 14.6, but I put too many credits in my purchase returns. I treated it as 16.4 in the relevant ledger accounts. That means in all of, in both of the accounts, I put 16.4. So I put 1,800 too much. So I'm going to put 1,800 on the debit side of purchase returns to make that smaller. And the creditors, uh, the li I would have had a minus here in my creditors' account saying that these creditors, we owe them less money. 
uh, but now I've taken too much lessons, I've taken too much away from their accounts, so I'm going to add 1800 on to them. That was never recorded anywhere, so I'll just go and put that straight in. So this is going to be uh, number one. So we're going to uh, debit, purchase returns. And then we're going to credit creditors. So say again, we had taken too much money uh, away from the money we owed our creditors, so we're just going to add that figure back on. Okay, so that's that. Now that's the first thing that we did. The second thing then we record now. So I might need uh, just to do some notes for this. So I move over to my rough work. What I should have done. So the credit note arrived from the supplier. This is the, the note that says I owe less money. Showing a restocking charge of 10% to cover the cost of return. The only entry made was a debit in the debtor's account. So the only entry made means I made one entry, so therefore there was no debit and credit, so I must have a suspense. So what I'm going to do now is, before I do the, what I should do in the first place, I'm going to go and record, uh, I'm just going to cancel what we did. So we put a debit of 13.2 in a debtor's account. So what I'll do now is I'm going to go straight down here, and I'm going to cancel that. So a debtor's account. I put a debit in, so I'm going to put a credit to cancel that, and I know that the corresponding entry, because it was only one entry made, must be a suspense. So the credit in the debtors is 13.2, is listed in the question. But again, all I've just done is cancelled the thing that I originally did, and I put the other entry in suspense, okay, because that was the only thing that we did. Now. Now we have to do the restocking charge of 10% to cover return. So that means we need to make a new account called restocking. So restocking charge, uh, which is an expense to me, and that expense is going to be the amount of the original transaction, which is 14,600, and I'm going to multiply that by 10%. So 1,460 is what my extra expense, and my creditors, they, we owe them, we've been charged extra money for them, 1460. So they took off the amount of money that we, for the goods we sent back, and they're charging us 10%, 1460 for the goods that were returned. So I put that straight in here. So a debit, restocking. And that's 1460, and I'll credit my creditors with the amount of money that they're charging me. And that's going to be a credit entry. Okay. Now. Okay. Uh, this is it. Okay. Dividend is ten percent per share. We're paid out on the twenty-first December. No entry made in the books. Okay. So I presume we don't need to go and do rough work for this because I understand that dividends is um, an expense. It's money that the business loses. Um, no entry made. So I'm going to have bank. So we have uh, less money in the bank, and we have uh, dividends. So we have less money, so therefore it's going to credit bank, and dividends is an expense, so we have a debit in it. Uh, dividend 10 cent per share. Now, we had 846,000 shares issued at the beginning, plus the 54, so that means we have a total of 900,000 uh, euro worth of shares. Uh, we're paying 10 cents to each of those shares, so we're going to pay out 90 grand. And the expense we're going to have is 90 grand. So, no record of paying dividends. I just notice above that I, I never put in here the fact that. Uh, I owe these people uh, the explanation, the narrative for the previous thing. So I have, uh, say, wrong recording of uh, both purchase returns and uh, restocking. Okay, so. Uh, 
So, uh, the last one. We sent a check for, for 620 in full settlement of business debt of 660. The, the, when this full settlement means the bill was fully paid off, so that means there must have been a discount given to us of 40 euro. That was entered correctly in the books. No entry made of the dishonouring of the cheque and the payment of account of 300 cash to blogs. Okay, so we need to see what's happened to our blogs account. So, uh, sorry, by blogs. Uh, we don't know our debtor's name. So we have a debtor. So, the debtor I owe, sorry, not debtor, creditor. I owe my creditor 660. The creditor uh, says, well, the discount is going to be, uh, the discount is 40. Um, then he's going to let me off the, uh, the rest after paying a check. So check obviously means bank. And that's 620. Uh, so that's what I originally did. Uh, when the check for 620 bounces, the, credit, the creditor, and that obviously there was zero in his account after I paid the bill. What he's going to do is he's going to say, well, I didn't receive that money. He's also going to cancel the discount. So he's going to reinstate the full debt of 660. So we have to reinstate the debt of 660, okay, and the, we're going to pay 300 to blogs. So we're going to have cash, 300. Okay, so that's what's going to actually happen. So, if I go down and see what's going to happen here. So first thing I need to do, because I have recorded the fact that the 660 was originally cancelled, so I need to reinstate the fact that the creditors now, we owe uh, 330 more. So I have creditors, and I'll have a uh, CR, because I owe this person more money, and I owe them 360 more. That's the extra debt. I've paid cash of 300, so that means 300 is now gone. That's cash. Uh, next, uh, let's see if let's go. Actually, if I do it here, let's just see. Here. Yeah. So I need to cancel the fact that there was a discount given. So I'll have. Uh, so the cash has gone down. Credit we owe that and that more. Uh, we have a bank figure because we wrote a check. And when we wrote a check, that would have been put in as a credit in the bank account. So I'll just quickly run up here and do that. Uh, so we have bank. So when I wrote a check, it would have been in here as 620. But when that check bounced, we have a debit entry of 620, okay, for the bouncing of the check. We also have a cash. We've paid 300 euro in cash. And then we'll also have the fact that we've lost out on our discount. So if discount received, which is an income, I'm going to cancel that income. So I would have had it normally in here as a debit. So I'm going to put it in here as a credit and that income is 40. So just doing that rough work. So now I'll go back over here. So I'll have my 40 in here. And no, so the bank is 620 on the credit side. Sorry, the debit side. Meaning, I thought I had 620 less in the bank, but because the check bounced, it turns out no, I have 620 more than I thought. Uh, that's a debit. Then uh, the discount received, so discount received is an income account. I'm cancelling an income, so I have a debit. And that is 40. So I'll just have a look and see is there a suspense involved here? I have 660 there and I have 660 there, so that means there's no suspense. So it's going to have no. So I've got no record of the check uh, dishonored. Check by me dishonored. And. I must learn how to spell. And. Um, payment. 300 euro on, on account. Okay, so that's the journal done. Now I need to move on and uh, I need to go and do the suspense, etc. So that's going to be the next one. Okay, that's great. Thank you.